What's up YouTube? It's Taylor. Today we're gonna to do something really fun. We're gonna do a multi-kilometer run. I'm gonna to try to hit a three mile trail. That's, I think it was 4.6 kilometers. Um, I'm gonna to try to go the full duration of the trail with Rover. I'll go for as long as I can and, and uh, we'll have a good run. All right, looks like everything's operational. Time to go to the park. All right, we're back here at the park. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the battery installed there. Get this ready. Come over to Rover here. And let's see, plug in our battery monitor. The main system power next. Hooking up the Raspberry Pi power. Boom, that's on. All right, so that's gonna boot up. We're gonna see those green lights. All right, Rover is live. Cool, it's actually moving my car. All right, we're all set. Let's go for a hike. You're walking robot. Yeah, it's my robot, yeah. <laughs> We're going on a walk. Cool. <laughs> yeah, this is Rover. It's all made on a 3D printer. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, you can make it at home. It's wow. <laughs> amazing. There's a website. It's uh, reboot.love. Reboot. It's, it's my website. It's got all the info on this thing. Very cool. Yeah. Well, it looks like something else broke, so we'll go a little farther out because we've still got three wheels, but I'm not going to be able to run this thing nearly as long today as I wanted. Yeah, you can see when it turns that, uh, that left rear wheel is lagging behind like that, so it's not producing any torque, and I bet we have the same shearing issue that we had before. So this will just be a short run. But we'll go a little farther. Hopefully we don't break another one on the left side.
So the whole point of this Rover project is I want to build a system that's stable enough that we can get people doing software development on a, nav on a navigation stack for this thing. So I want to develop a camera-based navigation stack for unstructured environments like this trail environment. And the goal is you'd be able to tell the robot, hey, go take a map of that trail. And you give it the route. Maybe just uh, someday you just show it a picture of a map, but you know, you don't have to start off that fancy. Um, and you say, yeah, go, uh, go take a map of that trail. And it says, okay. And it drives around with its cameras and it uses its cameras to build a map of the environment while it's driving. And it does it all autonomously. So that's what I'm very interested in. And that's why I'm building this platform. Oh boy, well, it looks like we might have killed the other wheel. Um, at this point, we have to turn back and I hope that I don't have to carry Rover with me. So if you see here, when I try to turn right, it just drives backwards. Try to turn left. I just got no torque coming out of the left side, so we're gonna have to nurse this thing home. I'm gonna drive it down the asphalt and just, uh, keep kicking it to straighten it out because uh, we're dead now so uh, that was uh, way way less than I wanted it's going to be fantastic to see what the failures are um, so the goal is to be able to get this thing to go on 20 kilometer runs um, or uh, or drive 20 kilometers between services I don't know if we'll have the battery life for a 20 kilometer run but five kilometer runs um, 20 kilometers between service um, that's kind of what I'd like to do. These are just some made-up numbers, but um, for now, we're not there. Um, I walked, um, you know, it could have been maybe a kilometer. I got the GPS, so we'll find out, um, but um, we broke the uh, back left wheel very quickly, and the front left wheel was the only one on that side, so it was going to be overloaded, and it broke. Um, so uh, we'll try to drive it back and see what broke. So I have no ability to steer this thing, so it's just going to do kind of long left turns and I'm just going to have to kick it. Keep it going. It's not going to be fun. So I'm just going to have to kick it. So I'm just going to have to kick it. It's just going to do kind of long left turns and I'm just going to have to kick it. Keep it going. But we're not too far from the entrance, so we're just headed back to the parking lot now. Playing ping pong. No way I can get this thing to turn Ugh. without kicking it. Without kicking it. This is what I'm working with here, is it just wants to keep turning left because it's got no torque on the right. Oh, I have an idea. All right, we got ourselves a robot steer. Yeah, that's not so 
right, so if I stand on the side and tug on it, I can get this whole assembly to go where I want it. So that's a bit dumb. I know there's a ridiculous shadow here. So, whew, this thing's tough. The camera's attached to my chest, it's a little awkward. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. It's my robot. Oh, fun. Yeah, but two of the wheels broke, and then now the third one broke. Uh, so I only have one operational wheel left. I think I'm going to have to carry it back to the parking yeah. lot. <laughs> it's so good. Like, expect after all, like, stressful Thanks. <sighs> Oh, the real problem is that wheel is dragging. Oh boy. Yep. Well, I've got one wheel. We can break it and drag on the tires. But I think, I think I'm gonna have to try my hand at carrying this thing back. And um, that's gonna be no video, but I see that we're only maybe 100, 200 meters from the parking lot so it's not gonna be the end of the world but anyway that is the uh the very end of the rover test today um definitely gonna learn a lot when we tear these things open so the whole point is to break it see what breaks and make it stronger and uh that's what we're doing so fun day no matter what this is rover still wants to go <laughs> Okay, well, we're back here. It wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, so went out, broke the first wheel pretty quickly, um, pushed it farther, just trying to drag that one wheel behind, and um, ended up losing the other one on the left, which makes sense. So I uh, had to turn around, uh, wrestle with the robot a whole lot, just trying to get it back here. Uh, finally figured out I can drag it. I can pull it with a strap to keep it going straight when only the right side of the uh, when only the right side wheels are operational uh, until I totally locked up the uh, right rear wheel so that that was actually dragging um, and, and and not rolling not rotating um, and only had one wheel left and knew knew it was time to carry it so we were a hundred meters from the parking lot it was no big deal um, but uh, um, you know. The whole point of this thing, I've been waiting for a long time to break it because I've been working on this robot for nine months and the first version just had wires everywhere and it didn't have any real suspension. So, um, you know, I validated the software and the electronics on the first version, but this is really the big mechanical upgrade version. And, um, you know, the goal is for this to be able to be really useful, to be able to do hard work and do it for a while. Um, and uh, that means that if something's going to break, we want to break it now in testing and fix the design. And that's what these runs are all about. So I had hoped we would do a four, four and a half, five kilometer run today. And uh, that's not how it worked out. But instead, we got some real information uh, buried inside these tires. We'll have to open it up and see exactly what broke. Um, if we're lucky, then what broke is the shaft coming off the motor. And that's already been fixed in the design. The one wheel that didn't break is the wheel that has that upgrade. So uh, we might be in good shape. Um, but if we broke something else, if we broke the pins, then there's already an upgrade for that in the works. I've got one full metal pin um, output plate in here ready to be installed, and I printed some more. So um, we can upgrade the outputs as needed, and if we just can't make it work with 3D printed parts, we'll start looking at you know other ways to get this done. Well, using as much of the 3D printer as we can, because it's a tool I like. I say you get one tool that you can do a whole lot with, 
It's going to be the 3D printer. Um, obviously, I still use drills with the stuff together, screws, hand tools, things like that, common tools. But if you're going to have one really highly specialized tool, it's not going to be a laser cutter. It's not going to be a CNC. It's going to be a $1,000 3D printer. Um, that's what I'm really interested in here is uh, minimizing the expense for the, the tools that you need. But make one good investment in a $1,000 3D printer and you can build a robot like this. Uh, right now, the thing likes to break after you know one kilometer run, so there's obviously more work to be done. But that's the work that I'm just fanatical about, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, all this is totally open source. This is CC0, no copyright, open source. Anybody can take these design files and do anything with them. Um, I just want to make good robots. I want to uh, to make good robots accessible to people. I think that's going to improve the situation for a lot of people if you can make them affordable and functional on the low end. So that's what I'm trying to do. There's a lot of people out there making some real high-end robots, but I don't see as many people that are serious about robotics working on this end of things. But what I like about this is you can go all over the world and a $1,000 3D printer is a little more affordable than something like a CNC machine or um, you know, trying to lease a very expensive, uh, uh, very expensive robot. So trying to make a DIY functional robot. That's what I'm all about here. And uh, this was a great day of testing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I checked you out on the on the website. Yeah, reboot.love. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay, I, there's really no more video. I don't have any more squirrels, I don't have any more robots. There's just no more video. I, I took a nice photo, but I can't be bothered to put it on here. It was pretty. Um, no, there's, I, there's nothing left. If you want more, you really, really must go to reboot.love and I don't know, read it. I need to make more posts. I, I want to put a full bomb for Rover on there. Um, I want to have instructions on how you can make your own. It's really clear at this point that that's going to be important. Um, at this point, I've got Rover working. I'm really happy about that. I've been editing videos, and I'm going a bit crazy about it. Um, and I want to make more assembly documentation, I want to make more videos, I want to make more upgrades to Rover, and if you think this is interesting, please just go to reboot.love and create an account and ask a question, read what I've got there, watch some of the videos I've posted, and tell us what do you think, what do you think about robots that can help people? Please. That's it. That's all I've got. There's nothing left.